and we will have some real application from Brooke how he has been using this tool. You know, case study, you know, I want to, at this point, I want to hand over to Brooks who will talk, show us an example, a case scenario which he has been, how he has been using uh, water quality index tool in his area in California. Brooke. Yeah, my name is uh, Brooke Singlehart. I'm with the uh, USDA in, NRCS here in, in California. I work in Ventura County, California, which is located between Los Angeles and Santa Barbara counties. There's about 92,000 acres of irrigated cropland in Ventura County that's primarily producing fresh market fruits and vegetables. The picture on this slide here is one I took during one of my field visits. It's overlooking the uh, Santa Clara Valley. And it just kind of shows you what the uh, the country looks out like like out here. We have a lot of um, orchards in the uh, in this case here in the valley floor, and oftentimes orchards will start creeping up creeping up the hillsides. Uh, over the years, I've primarily worked with farmers to develop conservation plans for hillside orchards, and their primary concern they usually have is controlling concentrated forms of soil erosion, and oftentimes. Uh, the conservation plans that we develop with the farmers are enrolled into the Environmental Quality Incentives Program, which is a, uh, a cost share and te technical assistance program through the Farm Bill. And so the farmers will often select some of the practices in that plan to, to enroll into the EQIP program. And due to the nature of the EQIP program and the limitation of some of, of the EQIP funds, we need to evaluate each conservation plan and determine the significance of resource concerns addressed in each plan. We also need to determine which plans will result in having the greatest uh, magnitude of impact on, on improving natural resource concerns. So to the greatest extent possible, we try to quantify the effects of the conservation practices on each environmental resource con concern to be addressed. So we, you know, sometimes we have, we have field tools that we evaluate certain uh, constituents with. And we also have used computer models. So with the introduction of this uh, water quality index, we have a, a new tool that we can use to, ass to assess at least the water, some of the water quality aspects of the uh, program. So for this presentation, I'm going to discuss the use of the water quality index in a citrus orchard. Um, here in, uh, in Ventura County, we live in, in, in the coastal area of California, so we have a Mediterranean climate. And the majority of our rainfall occurs during the late fall and winter months. And the terrain is very hilly, and many soils are subject to erosion. So with a combination of climate and terrain, uh, accelerated soil erosion on agricultural lands is one of the primary resource concerns we were faced with. And this slide here shows a, um, a topogra topographic representation of the field that uh, I'm using for this study. It's um, you can see it's pretty pretty mountainous around here, but the field I'm looking at is going to be right here in this area, in this little valley. It's a still sloped land. So this is a lemon orchard here. Okay. Now the setting of this orchard is a mature lemon orchard. It's on loam soils. Uh, slopes run anywhere from 5% to 9% in this little, this little section through here. Uh, there's minimal ground cover in the alley, so in this aerial photo you can see, you know, the the bare soil in the alleys between the trees. And uh, it's irrigated on micro sprinkler irrigation, little, little micro sprinklers, which are low volume, low pressure. Uh, the sprinklers are situated up under the tree canopy, so they try to keep the uh, water into the, you know, in, into the root zone of the tree. And the tree rows are running up and down slope. Now, off to the sides here, this is a, these, these hillsides are a lot steeper, and these trees up here are avocados. That's generally what happens down here. People plant avocados on the slopes because they're, one reason is they're very sensitive to frost. So we get some, you know, when cold air hits, it drains, typically drains downhill. Okay, the resource concerns identified in this, in this field here is a, one is a sheet and rail erosion, which is estimated to be greater than six tons per acre per year with Russell 2, Russell 2, which is a soil prediction erosion prediction model. We also observed irrigation-induced erosion, irrigation runoff, and evidences of stormwater runoff and transport of sediments out of the field. The Russell 2 is a model that we use to estimate rates of sheet and reel erosion by rainfall on a per acre 
an annual basis. So for this field, we also sought to, use, sought to evaluate water quality effects. And water quality in Ventura County, you know, sediments are a big, is a big issue. In this county, it's one of the primary resource concerns. So when the water quality index tool became available, I wanted to try using it. And so remember, remember the water quality index tool generates a number on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the best conditions, where it's considering, it considers physical factors of the field and some of the management practice, management factors. So uh, just for the field the way it is in current management, I came up with a uh, water quality or the benchmark water quality index of 5.67. So these are the uh, parameters I selected for the uh, uh, water quality tool. Uh, slopes 5 to 10 percent. Uh, note that the, uh, all these soil factors in here, uh, the hydrologic soil group, um, erosion factor, organic matter, I just got this out of the web soil survey. We also did a little bit of uh, ground treating out there with some soil samples. And then for the uh, vegetation, I selected medium cover just throughout the year. And this is to account for the tree canopy. And also for uh, prunings, um, lemon trees are pr pruned on an annual basis. And in this case here, the farmer leaves the prunings in the orchard floor and he, he chops them with a flail mower and just leaves them in place. You know, some years the trees produce, more, some years trees are pruned heavier than others. So some years, we, some years we can get a lot of mulch out there and some years not very much from the prunings. Also selected, um, um, for nitrogen and phosphorus, I selected the synthetic fertilizer split application during the growing season. So this particular farmer, and which is true for most orchards out here, is a fer fertilized through the irrigation system. And I, um, so I selected moist, you know, NP fertilizer broadcast moist, so it's going to come right out of the irrigation system. Okay. So what the farmer decided to do just, just after this initial plan we developed to treat uh, soil erosion runoff, he decided to do a cover crop. And um, in this point, at this point in his career as a farmer, he has not tried uh, cover, cover cropping in his orchard yet. So in the fall of 2012, he planted his first cover crop and he used a, uh, a hand broadcast seeder. He had three or four guys out there doing that. So as the crop grew, he was, he was pretty pleased with the performance of the cover crop, and this resulted in him deciding to plant more acres for the fall of 2013. And which was, so by doing that, he went out and he rigged up a uh, kind of a, a mechanical broadcast seeder to go on the back of a, um, of a four-wheeler. And you can see, I don't think you can see this picture, but um, you can see the orchard's pretty well in, in, in normal conditions. It's pretty, pretty bare out there so it is and you can see the the width you know how, how much alley is exposed between between the trees so you know we do get a, a fair amount of runoff and and erosion here so he, he did some tillage work out here to prepare the soil so the cover crop did really well it was planted in November of 2012 and by March in March 2012 we had a good cover out there in April 2013 and we got a good seed seed crop um, this uh, cover crop is a cool season annual cool season annual grasses. Um, they can just live on the rainfall we get here. The winter of 2012-2013 uh, was a low rainfall year for us. We only got about five and a half inches, but it apparently was enough to get this crop growing and and did well. And, and I've been out there this year, and he's got some uh, um, plants coming back again this year too. So, so to sum it all up. Um, when we, do our, when we do our evaluations of the field, you know, we look at the benchmark conditions, then we look at the planned conditions. So on the water quality index tool, just considering the benchmark, we had a 5.67. And then the water quality uh, by for the planned condition increased to 7.3. Um, so what I did was on the vegetation, I changed the vegetative vegetation cover to high. So this still accounts for the... Uh, tree canopy, but now we have pretty much full cover in the alleys with the, uh, with the cover crop. And then, of course, by just doing the vegetative cover alone, the, the index only increased to 5.85, so I think you know, the uh, index needs to, to realize we're doing a conservation uh, practice, so I selected conservation cover. 
And essentially, in, in an orchard, in the alleys, a, a cover crop, if it's, you know, especially during a reseeding, if it's a reseeding, cool season grass, that essentially is a conservation cover to protect the soil. And also, you know, to, as a supplement or a verification of the water quality index, you know, I ran Russell again. So recall the, the benchmark condition for soil loss with Russell was estimated at greater than six tons per acre per year. And the plan condition brought us down to less than one ton per acre. 